Hello, ATC Connect Group. So good to uh, be with you again as we're finishing off our teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, last week we started talking about the power gifts. The power gifts consist of three gifts within the power gift. And that is number one, uh, the gift of faith, which we spoke about last week. And today I want to talk about the working of miracles and the gift of healing to finish off this series. Very important. And again, I want to just emphasize this, that the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit cannot be uh, taught. The gifts of the Holy Spirit need to be caught. There's some teaching uh, to, to learn how to operate and to uh, be effective in prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, some of these things. But when it comes to the power gifts, it's really something that happens. Uh, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that we're to, to seek after uh, God and to desire the spiritual gifts. So we need to go after that. And so what I want to look at here today um, is uh, the working of miracles. So the gift of healings and miracles uh, often work together. So important to know this, that the, the gifts of healing and miracles often work hand in hand. We're going to see that as we look at this. We see in Exodus chapter 7, 8, 9, uh, Exodus chapter 10 and 12, we see that God delivers the children of Israel uh, out, of, out of Egypt through Moses' leadership as, and God uses signs and wonders and miracles, okay? Now, the working of miracles really is uh, an interruption of the system of nature. So when God parted the Red Sea, that is a working of miracles. When God sent plagues on Egypt and when it was dark for days on end, these are working of miracles. Why? Because there's an interruption of the systems of nature, okay? And I, I want to say this, it's so important, faith receives a miracle, but the working of miracles works a miracle, okay? I'm going to say that again. Faith receives a miracle. When we have faith for a miracle, we have faith in God, it will receive a miracle, but the working of miracles will work a miracle, okay? And um, I, I, it's very important that we understand this. I'll give you an example here uh, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 4 to 7. If you go with me to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 4 to 7. But as one was cutting down a tree, there was a man cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water and he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place where it fell. Okay. And uh, so he cut off a stick and he threw it in there and he made the iron float to the surface. Okay. Therefore, he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out and took it with his hand. And so we see here, how many know that iron does not float unless it's encased and it's in the form of a boat and there's an air chamber. I mean, iron by itself will not float. It will sink. And so we, we see here that uh, we see that there's an interruption in the systems of physics here. This is very important to understand this. And so uh, we see in Matthew chapter 14, we see Jesus, uh, Jesus walks on water. Uh, I don't know if you know anyone who's walked on water. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, you sink when you step on water. So again, we see an interruption in the systems of nature. Okay, uh, so that's really what a working of miracle is. When you see, uh, when you see miracles happening, it's it's an interruption in the systems of nature, and we cannot explain it. Now, talking about the gift of healing, the gift of healings is to deliver the sick and destroy the works of the devil. Okay, or we see supernatural healings as well. We have been given authority to heal the sick as um, the disciples were. We see this in Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. And we see supernatural healings. They happen when, with the laying on of hands, uh, anointing people with oil, and speaking the word. So these are the ways we see healing in the scripture. There's the laying on of hands, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, the Bible says. The Bible says to anoint people with oil. Right? We see in the book of James, call for the elders of the church, anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. And then thirdly, we see just the spoken word. You can speak the word of God and healing will come in people's lives. And so that's the gift of healing. So we understand that the working of miracles often works in conjunction with the gift of healing. Let me give you a few examples from scripture. Looking at John chapter 9, John chapter 9, uh, verse 6 and 7. And he had said, and when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and he made clay with the saliva 
And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. And so we see Jesus, you know, how many know that spit? Um, you know, spit has no property of healing in it. But here we see a working of miracles in conjunction with a healing. And so many times we see these two things working together. And we look at Mark, Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 8. Go to Mark chapter 8 with me. Mark eight twenty two to 25. And then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, okay, again, we know spit doesn't have any healing component to it, but he spit on the eyes and he put his hands on him and he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and he said, I see men like trees walking around, okay. And then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up and he was restored and he saw everything clearly. So again, Jesus is spitting on people. Uh, so we see, again, this is this is not natural, okay? This is a working of miracles in conjunction with uh, a gift of healing that's taking place. So now look, let's look at Acts uh, chapter 19, verse 11 to 13. I, I love what it says here, and this is uh, in the ministry of Paul the Apostle. It says, now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So we see that there's a miracle taking place, and I, I need you to understand this. Miracle is always the interruption of the systems of nature. Look what happens. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Okay, And so we see here that, um, that, that this is an unusual miracle, because aprons and handkerchiefs don't have any power in, in, in and of themselves. And so we see a defying here. Uh, of the systems of nature. I actually had this experience once. We were doing a, a, a preteen uh, youth group many years ago, and kids were coming in off the street and from the school system, and we, we had a little group, maybe 20 uh, preteens, and we, we were talking to them about the Lord, and I said, is there anything that um, uh, you guys want prayer for? And one of the one of the children said, I wanna pray for my, um, my brother was in a car accident, uh, and he was a little bit older, and he was in a car accident, and he was in a coma. And uh, I would like to see that my brother come out of the coma, uh, you know, before Christmas. Uh, Christmas is coming up soon. I think we were in November. And the doctor said, there's a slight, there's a very small chance this, this guy will ever come out of the coma. And if he does, he's going to have brain damage. And so we said, well, let's, let's believe God for that. And so we, we prayed over the handkerchief. I grabbed a handkerchief. We prayed over it because we couldn't get to the hospital to visit him. We prayed over the handkerchief, prayed that God would, uh, would, uh, would, his power would go into the handkerchief. And then I gave the handkerchief to the, to the, to the, the, the girl and she brought it for her brother and put it under his pillow. I said, put it under his pillow at the hospital. So she did. And uh, uh, just, I, I don't remember if it was a day or two days, but just before Christmas, he came out of the coma. Uh, he had no brain damage, and I guess he spent Christmas with the family. So we see a working of miracles in conjunction with healing, okay? And so we see the two working hand in hand, okay? And uh, so the working of miracles, the gift of healing will work together as we pursue and we believe God for miracles. Okay, one, one, one last verse here before I give you guys a scripture to read and study for yourselves. Let's go to Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Now here's a prayer the early church is praying in the midst of persecution. This is what they're praying. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servant that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal. So here we see the gift of healing, okay? By stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled um, was shaken, okay? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Now, here's the thing. Um, the place where they were started to shake like an earthquake. That is an interruption of the systems of nature. So right away, God was answering them by shaking the place. I don't know about you guys, but I believe we're living in the end, end days. We're at the end of history. 
And we need to be believing God and praying like the early church and saying, God, you know what? You know, uh, grant unto us boldness that with signs and wonders we may proclaim the word of God. Amen. This is the time and the season that we're living in. So what I'd like you guys to do as a, a bit of a homework assignment is I'd like you guys to together read Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. And I want you to, to discuss uh, how you see the signs and wonders and miracles working in this situation in Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. And then as we're finishing off this course this week, I want you guys to, um, as a group, to pray uh, this passage of scripture we just read in Acts chapter 4, verse 29 to 31. Put your own words on it, put your own spin on it, but pray this prayer saying, God, would you grant to us that through signs and wonders and miracles, we would see the hand of God because we're living in a time where God's spirit is about to be poured out in a powerful way through his body. And I want you guys to take some time uh, to pray for one another, uh, to, to activate one another uh, in the gift of faith, in the gift of uh, the working of miracles, in the gifts of healing. This is a season when we want to be operating in the utterance gifts. We want to be prophesying. We want to have words of knowledge. Uh, we want to be prophesying. We want to have words of knowledge. We want to have words of wisdom. We want, you know, we want to be operating in all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the ones that God would release upon us because we're living in the end days and, and God wants to use us to reach people with the gospel. And I believe this last move of God, this end move of God, it's going to be filled with signs and wonders and miracles and we get to be part of that. So I want to just encourage you. Let me pray for you as we finish this course uh, together. Father, I thank you, Lord, uh, for everyone here who's on this uh, call here. I pray, Father, that um, you're going to stir up a hunger for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God, that we would see that the gift of salvation is awesome. And if that's all we got, we would be we are content. But Lord, you said there are gifts of the Holy Spirit that have been given to us so that we can go out and be empowered to bring the gospel to this generation. God, would you pour out your spirit? God, would you let your gifts begin to flow in these connect groups? Would you, by your Holy Spirit, come and visit with power, God? And not even visit, but habitate with us. Let your gifts come forth so that people would get saved, that we would depopulate hell and populate heaven because of the signs and wonders and miracles happening through every person who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gifts of the Holy Spirit will flow in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Take some time to pray. Take some time to minister to one another and just stretch your faith out and believe for the best that God has. God bless you guys.